So, hey everyone, uh, I'm Lance Eaton, and I'm sharing with you five things I learned recently. Uh, and by learned recently, I mean in the last two weeks, as I've been visiting classrooms and talking with faculty and just seeing what people are doing. Uh, so I just thought I'd share them back in hopes that whoever is watching this, maybe there's one, two, or three of the things that I'm sharing that you find useful, and maybe decide to try out in the next week or two. If you do, please let me know. So the first one is actually pretty a pretty uh, simple thing to do, but it's an important thing to do. Uh, when you're playing video, what I strongly recommend and what I saw used really well is making sure to turn on closed captions. Uh, the reason for this is not just necessarily for people that might have some issues with hearing, but this can also help with language acquisition and to also uh, where English may not be a first language or just in order to get clarity because sometimes things aren't recorded as well. And to turn on the closed captioning, it's actually really easy in that bottom slide. So if you're using YouTube, it's particularly easy. You just look for that CC. Um, and sometimes you'll get authentic or actual closed captions, and sometimes you'll get automated. Uh, automated aren't great, but they're still something a little bit better. Anyways, really simple, easy to do. Another thing that you can do is actually, and this you might recommend to your students, which is turn uh, off your video for you. So sometimes one of the pe reasons people get challenged by being in Zoom is they're constantly seeing themselves, and that can be tiring. Um, you're constantly, you know, how do I look? How do I appear? Uh, there's a level of exhaustion that that can produce in itself. So you can recommend or encourage that students don't turn off their video to everyone else, but just hide their video from themselves. And again, that's something pretty easy to do. So when they're in the Zoom environment, they'll want to scroll to the upper right right corner of their particular video. So when they do, they'll see the little mute button and those three little button, those three little dots. Once they click on those three little dots, they'll get a couple different options. And the option they want to select is hide self view. Once they do that, then it's just the other person and they or whoever else is in the classroom and not themselves. So it makes it easier for them to pay attention to them and not feel like they are on camera as much. If you want to undo it, it's almost as simple. You go up to any of the other any of the other screens that are available, uh, and again, you see that that three little that blue square with three little dots, and you select that. You select show self view, and ta-da, you appear back. So. Really simple, pretty easy to do. You might recommend it to your students, especially if they're feeling like they don't want, they don't mind being on camera, but they get tired of seeing themselves. I certainly know I get tired of looking at myself. I mean, look at that mug. Ugh. Another thing, and this is something that um, on our end we've been trying to do, and we also encourage you to do it, is to find the center of the classroom and put the owl there. Uh, initially, we were putting it kind of more towards the front, but if we want to maximize the space so that the virtual students can also see the students that are there face to face, try to figure out where in the room is is closest. Um, now this will be a little challenging because we're dealing with wires and things like that. But again, it's a small little change that can be done fairly quickly that will potentially create a little bit more closeness for everybody. Uh, another thing that we we saw happening and we wanted to encourage and share is saving the chat. So. Sometimes if you're having a really robust conversation, um, you students may be putting it, you know, recommendations, ideas into the chat, and that could be a great resource to reshare later. And so you can do this in, in two ways, really. If you're in the Zoom environment and you have the chat open, if you move your cursor over to the right, uh, down right where you see those, those three little dots, right where that arrow is, if you click on that, it's gonna prompt you, do you wanna save the chat? You select, you select that and then it, you'll get a little pop-up that says, you know, it will be saved in a folder. The other way you can do this is just highlighting the chat in that, you know, with your cursor, just kind of click and drag, uh, and then doing control C on a uh, PC and a, I think, I always forget the name of the button, but it's the one with the, the squiggly lines on it and C on a Mac. 
So once you do that, uh, what I recommend is then opening up your email and pasting it there and emailing it to yourself and then figuring out, you know, if this is at the end of class, you don't want to, you know, do all of these things. You can email it to yourself and then figure out what you want to share in the next day. If you did save the chat using that little button, when you close Zoom, a little folder should open up and you should see this little file right here. It's a text file that's, that is meeting save chat. Again, open that up. Uh, you can you know, copy what's in there and email it to yourself or you can drag it to the desktop and then uh, attach it to an email. So pretty simple, you know, if you save the chat, use it, you know, encourage students on Zoom to use the chat and then you can go back and look at that as another means of participation as well. Uh, and then one last thing which I think is really important and I think we sometimes uh, get ahead of ourselves and I saw this used actually really well a few times by, by faculty so I was, I was so excited to see it um, and that's simple clarifications for useful context. So I'm sure we have all gotten um, a link like this, watch this video. Okay, uh, if your students get that, that's great. but but what about it? Uh, what is this video? What, you know, give them a, giving a little context goes a far way. So you might say, watch this video by Jane McGonigal. Or you might say, watch this video by Jane McGonigal on gaming can make a better world. But you might also want to include how much time that video is going to be. Uh, because if it's the, you know, if you're sending them to a five minute video or an hour video, why not save them the click to figure that out? Uh, because if it's a three minute video, I might be able to watch it right now and then. If it's a hour video, I need to, you know, me as the student needs to plan. Uh, and then of course, you might also empower them to know that they can find it in different places with some video content. TED Talks are a great example where you could say, you know, watch this video by Jane McGonigal on gaming uh, can make a better world, 1947 minutes on TED or YouTube. And by doing that, you're signaling that if they run into a problem with TED, uh, the site is down or something like that, they can also jump over to YouTube and there's a good chance that it'll it, all the TED Talks end up on YouTube as far as I know. So that's a good example. It won't happen with everything. Thing, but if you tell them that it's on TED, if for some reason the link doesn't work or they happen to remember that but they don't, can't go into the course to find it, they might be able to go and search that website and pull up that link themselves. So you're also empowering them to go and you know figure some things out if they, they run into hiccups. All right, so those are my five simple tips. I had hoped to make this five minutes, but we're at the eight minute mark. Shame on me. No, no shame on me, just kidding. All right, so thank you all very much. I hope there was something useful here. I hope there's things you can share either with your colleagues or with other students. Uh, and if you have any questions, have any tips that you want me to share with others, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, I'm always happy to uh, share in all the knowledge that I get to see exchanged here at College Unbound. All right, have a great day.